Hello and welcome to my workshop. My name is Paul. I'm a luthier and bow maker based in Tasmania, Australia. In this series, I will share some of the projects I work on each week, giving you a glimpse over my shoulder as I work as though you were looking through the window into my workshop. Hello, today I'll be looking at fitting a new winding on this Frechner cello bow. So I've uh, removed the winding, cleaned the stick up to get ready to rehair, and uh, needs a new winding and leather, so I thought I'd run through the process that I follow um, to fit a new winding. On this stick, I would generally, on this type of bow, I would generally fit a silver, uh, use a silver thread. However, the customer on this one's requested a uh, silver plated copper. It's a little uh, cheaper to, to do. Um, and uh, just still, still looks nice, um, it's still silver plated. Uh, it's just that as it wears, I guess the silver wears through and then you get that, uh, that copper color underneath. And sometimes they can go a bit green and off the, the chemical reaction between the copper and your hand can go a little green, that's the, sort of the difference. Um, so we're using uh, copper wire on this, silver plated copper wire, um, but that's just uh, because of the customer preference. Put the wire here in a spool. Some people use a jig and they stick the bow in a jig and they turn the bow around. Um, I just have the wire on a spindle on the bench and I run it through the leather jaws on my vice for tension. Probably stand up here so I disappear out of the shop. Excuse me while I get a cup of tea. So to start off with, we know where the original winding started and finished at this point here. And we're going to mark it off the, where the frog comes up. We want the edge of our leather to be. I'm just going to mark that off with the pencil. Generally it's around seven and a half centimetres and it's uh, well, 77 millimetres from there, point A to point B, so we're around seven and a half centimetres. What I do is run a few winds around over the top of the end of the wire that holds it in place. Bit of thread, we'll pull a bit of wire through, a little bit of tension on it. I can adjust the tension with the jaws of the vise, then I'll move it up to the point at which it needs to start. That needs to line up with the uh, mortise on the stick. And you want a reasonable amount of tension on it because you want to keep it nice and tight, especially the first rounds. And then once we get rounds to one full revolution, we're going to flick it over the top. Of the wire, just pull it back a little, hopefully we're getting this on the video, Hey Matthew, the two tree that mm. it should be on, yes. and then under that there's a one tree button. The, on, on top of it is a one tree. On button. top of it, can you can you click the one tree button? Done. It's zoomed in. Yeah. Can you still see what my hands are doing? Yes. It's like that. Okay, so about there. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So that's to zoom in. I might get you to zoom it out a bit later. Hey, just call me when you need me. I will. 
that's my little uh, production assistant helping me. So each time we come around and we cross back over the uh, loose wire that we've wound around, we've come, we, we're crossing back over it, and each time we're just pushing it, pushing it back up because that's going to come up and, and pull out square. Um, hopefully you'll see in a moment how that works. Go around four or five times. You just want to start keeping it nice and tight, and then we loosen off. end portion and you pull it through and pull it down nice and square so it runs down the stick of the bow and keeping it nice and tight just to keep it tight and keep this straight down the bow slowly wind our way around to help, help hold everything in place. I'm just going to put the little dab of super glue on that. And then come down. the top of the super glue at which point we've done roughly a centimeter just under a centimeter about eight millimeters worth and just take the scalpel and hold on to that end because we want to save this piece of scrap wire and you just want to butt your knife right up against there without cutting the string that you obviously take it and cut it off Dead flush, you save that piece. And do another couple of loops around. Now at this point we're just going to continue going around, 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 around until we get right down the other end. And I'll pause it here and I'll cut to when we get to the other end and we're looking at uh, starting to do the um to do the, the finishing off process at the, at the opposite end. Matthew! Yeah? The one with the two strokes. Okay, it's going. It's going? Yep. Okay. Thanks, buddy. Okay, so we're down at the other end now. We've got roughly a centimetre, a bit under a centimetre. There. We might do another couple of rounds. Just go around a couple of times. Alright. Now we're going to grab our scrap piece of wire that we cut off at the start and tuck that under. Other people have different methods of doing this to the way I do it, so this is not the only way to do this. We're going to tuck it under and we're going to wind over the top of it. And that leaves a little channel underneath. 
that we're then going to tuck the end of the wire back under, this end of the wire back under and pull through. Nice and a little bit longer on this end than this one that I'd normally do. Cello bows I like to tuck a fair bit under if I can. Let's hold it all in place. Especially when you've got the situation with this one there's a fair bit of thumb wear around the end here. Okay, so that's as far as we want to go. So just going to trim the end off, roughly there. Okey okey, so we've trimmed that off. Then you want to grab this end of your wire or one end of the wire. One or Then you pull the, uh, just pull it out, but you pull the end of the piece that you had, the, the, the spare piece of wire that you had in there, you pull that out. Um, didn't realise the camera wasn't rolling. Take the end. Of your wire. And I just... Flatten it out a little. So let's just get it in there. Thread it back in. And then you just press one end of it in the palm of your hand just to get a little kink on the end of it. So that when you thread it through, it comes up and out. And get, I use uh, a little bit of Vaseline on it. To help it uh, slide through. And you take the end. And there's a little little lump left where you had the piece of wire that you wound it over the top. And you just want to thread it. Underneath until it comes through like so. Something's poking through there. And we start to slide that through and pull it through a nice, one smooth, even motion. Right. And then you can tighten up this last area around here. Where it comes around, just make sure that it comes around nice and tight. Tuck it back, pull it back on itself, and tuck it in. 
and I'll take a end of the scalpel or, or something. You could use uh, you could use a, 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 a screwdriver, and you just press it down over the top. Press it in. Prefer the end of the knife. And make sure you've got nice and Right over the top. And take a little double super glue. In the end. Maybe at that end. And then on the other side. Tap a little bit of super glue around it. This is all going to be covered by the leather on this end, so that's why we can dab a, a tad of super glue on it. And that just helps uh, hold this, this end of it all together and uh, prevent it ensures. The other problem with this one is because we've got this thumb wear, the, where the winding comes around as it comes up to the thumb wear, it starts getting looser and looser. So it's really quite difficult to get it nice and tight. Um, so just to ensure that holds on, this end here will be nice and tight and held in. This end here will be nice and tight and held in. No loose looseness there. Um, and that's how I tuck that back end through. It does look quite fiddly, it is quite fiddly to do. Um, but the only other option is you some people will drill a hole in the stick, put the wire through, pull it through and put a plug in it. Uh, I don't like drilling holes in my bows. Um, and I'd rather have the winding fail than have a hole through my through my bow. Um, but I don't have very many fail. I generally tuck in there and pull through quite nice and tightly and, and, and stay there. Um, no reason why they would come out. Anyway, that's fitting a winding.